This is the largest structure in the universe, and it should not physically exist. What you are looking at is the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, the largest known structure in the observable universe. It's an incomprehensibly massive galactic filament consisting of millions of galaxies and billions of individual stars. It is 10 billion light years across, spanning approximately 12% of the observable universe itself. The Great Wall is a marvel of cosmology and a testament to just how little we truly understand about the universe. Yet ever since its discovery by a team of American and Hungarian astronomers in 2013, the Great Wall has been mired by controversy, and some concerning contradictions that either means our methods of observing space are misguided or our understanding of the physics behind the universe, and perhaps even time itself, has a major flaw in it. Naturally, with something this mind-numbingly vast, the answers are not all in the back of the book, some we might never know. But I'd like to take you on a journey with me, to the edge of the map, to learn more about how this structure throws into question our understanding of the universe and our place within it. But first, we need to understand a few basic assumptions about the early universe and the physics that drive it. It's important to keep in mind that, at scales this large, we aren't seeing these structures as they are right now. Telescopes utilize a phenomenon called redshift to see objects very far away. Redshift is a natural increase of the wavelength of light emitted by these objects and the subsequent decrease of the frequency, transforming gradually from regular visible forms to less visible variations, only detectable with special instruments. The farther away an object is from us, the more redshifted it becomes as its light travels to reach our telescopes and our eyes. The farther away an object is, the more redshifted its light becomes. Because light even takes incredible amounts of time to travel the universe, this means that all redshifted objects we see now are nothing more than the emitted light from these objects millions or even billions of years ago. It is essentially visual time travel, and with the right instruments it allows us to see the universe as it was in the past. We have no way of knowing if any of these objects we see still exist, or how much they've changed, because we're still waiting on that light to reach us. The early universe was a very different place than it is today, far hotter and denser at a fraction of the size it is now. These primordial conditions are still being studied, but they suggest a universe with enough high-energy physics in a small enough space, literally, to form and perhaps just as quickly destroy objects that the universe is too vast and too low-energy and tropic to affect today. This is called Hubble's Law, which explains the expansion of the universe and how that expansion might just destroy us. A video for another time, thought to stay updated. These conditions for our understanding of the early universe, both Hubble's Law and Redshift, are paramount to our understanding of the Borealis Great Wall and support its existence, but also lend to its contradiction. A major critique of the Great Wall stems from the fact that it challenges our assumptions on gravity and the distribution of mass within the universe. Most cosmological models describe the universe as mostly homogeneous, isotropic, meaning more or less the same in all directions, possibly at an infinite scale. After all, if the universe spread from a single point in the expansion of the Big Bang, it makes sense that if that expansion were uniform, major irregularities in that uniformity would be minimal. And yet, the Great Wall exists, occupying a massive 12% of the observable universe, even if the universe is orders of magnitude larger than our observations tell us, it would still occupy such a statistically significant portion that it can't help but challenge our theories on homogeneity. However, it is worth noting that more and more scientists are beginning to accept the fact that the early universe was more asymmetric than we first thought, filled with denser pockets in some regions that when stretched over time as the universe expanded, could have led to the kinds of superstructures we see today, like the Great Wall. This asymmetric model could also account for dark matter, the mysterious substance that holds together large galaxies despite their speed having should have ripped them apart. Dark matter could be nothing more than tiny black holes formed by these denser pockets billions of years ago when a far hotter and more compressed universe could have easily forged them. The Great Wall might be the same. Unfortunately, that's not the only breach in the Great Wall's integrity. The structure also throws into question many of the current models of the universe's age and evolution. At an estimated distance of 10 billion light years away, that means we see the structure as it was 10 billion years ago, or roughly 3.79 billion years after the Big Bang. Keeping in mind that the universe itself is just shy of 14 billion years old. These current models of the universe's age struggle to explain how something so large could form in such a relatively short amount of time. 
Our own solar system took approximately 4 billion years to form, and yet this massive structure apparently did it in less time? You can understand why scientists are skeptical. The structure itself was too big and too complex to exist so early in the universe, and as of yet, there is no serious explanation for how such a massive structure came to be. Many scientists have used these apparent contradictions to justify the suggestion that the Great Wall might not exist at all, that it could be nothing more than a statistical error, that the original discoverers blew out of proportion. After all, what's the greater likelihood? That the majority of our long-standing models about the universe are completely incorrect, or that a couple overworked scientists fudged a few numbers. But that original team has fought back against these accusations. A 2020 paper they released claims that their analysis of the most reliable current data sets supports the Great Wall's existence, that more data is needed to truly confirm it. So who's right? No one really knows. But the scientists were right about one thing. More data is badly needed. Luckily, scientists have a solution. The Transient High Energy Sky and Early Universe Surveyor, or Theseus for short, is a proposed satellite by the European Space Agency to more closely study faraway X-rays and gamma rays associated with the early universe, possibly shedding more light on how the Great Wall, if it exists, could have formed in the first place. With more information, we might find out who's truly right one day, and be able to determine if our current models are as well. Ultimately, while this story goes to show that we still have so much more to learn about the universe, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. All of science is a shifting field, adopting new paradigms as old information grows or is replaced. Whether or not the Great Wall exists, just because it calls into question older models of the universe and its age, doesn't mean that those models were flat out wrong or that they've necessarily led to false discoveries or bad information. It doesn't mean that science is wrong or space is fake and it's all a waste of money. It's simply another piece to a constantly growing and possibly endless puzzle. But that's the nature of discovery, and frankly, if there was nothing new to learn, then that'd be an awfully boring reality. So take some solace in knowing that humanity's best and brightest are always on the lookout for the full and accurate truth on our place in the universe. And even if there's a few mysteries and theory changes along the way, we'll all learn a little more about what it truly means to exist and to live. Fall to stay in the loop.